Riverside Plaza Hotel here in London, England, for the final undercard press conference for Saturday night's incredible night of boxing action. Now, it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hunt, Master of Boxing, and it will be broadcast live around the world, exclusively here in the United Kingdom on Sky Sports Box Office, and exclusively streamed in the United States on the Zone. We're sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, JD Sports, and Val. Depending on your age, ladies and gentlemen, we've all had that experience of going to the record store and buying a, a great album. And back in the day, you'd go home and you sit down, you open up the album, and you listen to all the A side, you flip it for the B side, you read the liner notes. It's just an incredible experience. These days, it's a lot more about the one hit wonder. Well, I call this show an album show, because it's from top to bottom. There are so many great fights on the card that I just can't personally wait to see myself. So I talk about one hit wonders, but there are some one hit wonders on here because we got a lot of heavyweights. Nine fights, five heavyweight fights. Speaking of Babish, the end from Croatia, who just fought last week in Rome, second round TKO, it's his second fight. Fabio Ward up here, managed by W. What up? There's Fabio right here. A lot of great heavyweight fights. Alan Pricey, you couldn't pay me to not to watch this fight. Derek Ward, Chisora, and Spielka should be an incredible fight. And all these other fights with CBS and React World, what a fight that should be. And Delphio and Aziz, a great Londoner fight. Cannot wait for it. So it's a great card. I call it an album show because from top to bottom, we've got some great stuff on here. Even though there are one hit wonders, there are a lot of them. So here they Tell you all about it and to introduce you to the fighters, the man that put it together, Mr. Eddie Hearn. Cheers, <laughs> Thank you, David Diamante. As always, an absolute rousing speech to start us off for the final press conferences today. I had a huge show on Sky Sports Box Office in the UK, designed across America from the great O2 Arena on Saturday night. An album show. I've never really heard that before. We'll run with it. Um, I'll just say it's the dog's bollocks. This is an absolute fantastic night of boxing from top to bottom. Like David said, three intriguing 50-50 matchups. We learned yesterday that the fight between Dillian White and Oscar Rivas will be for the WBC interim world title for the mandatory position for the WBC world title. It is just a brilliant heavyweight matchup with two elite heavyweights. Beneath that, Dave Allen against Dave Price. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no clue. Normally, Dave Allen wears a suit, and David, sorry, Dave Allen wears, Dave Price wears a suit, Dave Allen looks like he's going down the gym. They've flipped roles today. Dave Allen's turned up looking like something out of Saddle Row. He's actually trained for this fight. I have no idea what is going to happen. Two great guys, two huge punches. Something explosive is happening in that fight. Derek Chisora against Arthur Spilka is a brilliant, brilliant fight. Another intriguing 50-50 heavyweight matchup, looking both of them to go and have a major fight potentially with Joseph Parker later this year. Lawrence Akoli, Fabio Wardley, Babbage, and a great start to the card with Dan Aziz against Charlie Duffield. Just a real trade matchup between two Londoners with big support, exactly the way you should start a huge night of boxing. And for me, potentially, the fight of the night between Chris Billum Smith and Richard Riakpour. I think it's just such a brilliant, brilliant young cruiserweight fight. Dawn Smith on the card as well, as I said, Fabio Wardley. And we're going to be speaking to all those guys shortly once we hear from the head of boxing at Sky Sports, Adam Smith. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, I love that album speech by, uh, by David. I look at it as uh, another chapter in the long story, but not just of uh, Sky Boxing, but of heavyweight boxing. It's uh, a fabulous car. I think back to a year ago when Dillian White beat Joseph Parker in that thriller and Derek Chisora had that amazing win over Carlos Taka. What a summer sizzler that was. And people went home talking about different fights on the card and that's what we've got again a year on. It's absolutely superb. You look at the, the table in front of us here. I cannot wait for some of those fights. You're right, the Aziz and Duffield fight. Chris and Smith of React Paul. These are 50-50 fights. You know, we don't know who's going to win. My guys, Johnny Nelson, Matt Macklin, Paulie Malahaji, they don't know who's going to win. It's a really, really good start to the night. And then it's heavyweight action. I mean, Derek Chisora, we love him. He's absolutely fantastic. He's had this incredible career. You never know what you're going to get with him. And you never know what you're going to get with Arthur Spilker as well. I was in Brooklyn for the uh, Wilder Spilker fight. And Arthur boxed so well that night for so many rounds. 
and it almost got it right until, of course, Deontay Wilder found a punch late on. But he's a good fighter. He's a southpaw. He's tricky. It's a very interesting fight for Derek, who now under Dave Colwell will be really interesting to see how they gel. I think that's a fantastic top of the bill. What about this one, David Price and, and, and David Allen? You know, they're just chatting away, the two of them. They're going to be ripping into each other on Saturday night. You've got the big man here with the, the huge jab and the right hand, and he's one of the most dangerous fighters in any weight for the first three or four rounds of a fight. And David Allen, look what he did to Lucas Brown with that body shot when we were worried about him topping the bill, let's be honest. And Eddie and I were debating, and Eddie said, you've got to stick with your man. And I'm like, is Dave Allen going to do it? We went with him, and look what he did. And he deserves this, and he's chief support on this one. What could he do? Can he take David Price's power? Can he come through? And then what will happen if he does win? Will the heavyweight division open up for him? It's a fantastic, not even an undercard. This is a really good show in itself before we get into Dillian White and Oscar Rivas. So uh, I can't wait, and I know my team and all the talent that are working on the night, Tony Benny, who's coming out, Carl Froch, they cannot wait. It's a night you want to be out of here. Thank you, Alan. And go down to the, the first table beneath us. We're going to start with Alan Babich. Alan, um, a great fight for you to get off the mark last week in Rome, a beautiful venue, and straight away two fights in two weeks as you begin your charge in the heavyweight division. Yeah, first of all, uh, I want to thank all of you for giving me the opportunity. I came to spar with Dylan Wright and the sparring was so tough, so good that he immediately said he wanted to manage me, you know. I just feel so blessed to be here and I want to show you the best boxing you can get. I want to be a friend, friend and fighter. Your reputation in those sparring sessions, not just with Dylan but with other people as well, they, they tell me you're the fastest person to get sent home from any training camp. Uh, <laughs> Dylan White speaks great things about you. and. Great time for the heavyweight division, not just in your country with Filip Hergovic as well, but worldwide now, this is a great time to be a heavyweight. Yeah, I was, uh, I was in two training camps and I was sent home after the first part. So I asked my trainer, am I going to go easier this time? I want to stay. He said, no, go hard. And I, I went like full on and we had a beautiful therapy, you know, and Dylan loves it. So, yeah. Good. Well, we look forward to seeing you. I haven't seen you in Milan, uh, sorry, Rome last week. I know you're going to be a lot of fun in the division. Um, one thing we're very proud of at Matchroom Worldwide is the development of young stars. You've seen guys coming out of the Olympics, you know, Anthony Joshua winning gold in the 2012 Olympics, going on winning world titles. Callum Smith, a great GB podium star member, going on to win world titles, Ring Magazine titles. Kalia Fire going from the Beijing Olympics to WBA world champion as well. Luke Campbell. You know, potentially on the verge of a huge fight with Vasily Lomachenko to win the Unified and Ring Magazine World Lightweight titles as well. And it's a passion of ours to develop young talent. We think we've got a great platform to give these young fighters activity all around the world. And someone we're very, very excited to welcome to that moment is Dalton Smith. I think Sheffield's, unquestionably Sheffield's most um, achieved amateur so far, has won just about everything, great member of the GB podium squad had his debut recently in Nottingham, fights for the second time on Saturday. Dalton, you were due to go on in Manchester, but you caught the big one at the O2, excited ahead of Saturday. Yeah, yeah, very excited. You know, I was down to box in Manchester, but that one fell through, so, you know, I've got to thank Eddie and Matchroom for, you know, giving me this opportunity to fight on a massive card like this. You know, if someone said to me last year, you know, you're going to be fighting on a pay-per-view show um, at the O2, I'd, I'd be like, oh, you're having a laugh, but, you know, that's what Matchroom's here to do, and, you know, it's up to me now to, to perform. You've been to those stadium shows, obviously you were there when Charlie won his world title and when he defended it as well. Just looking to soak up the experience on Saturday and, and following the footsteps of your other GB team members who have, have done this before. Yeah, that's it. It's about developing, you know, fighting on big stages like this and learning all the time. And, you know, I believe um, in the next couple of years, in the future, I'll be headlining here myself. But now it's just, just soaking it all up, learning and taking every fight at a time. Look forward to seeing you in action on Saturday night. We talk about the heavyweight division, and domestically the division is hotter than ever. This young man in front of me, Fabio Wardley, is someone you're going to be hearing a lot about. Fabio, welcome. You boxed at the O2 before, um, but not on a card of this size, and certainly not in a test of this size as well. Looking forward to definitely the biggest step up of your career so far on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've had the privilege of, this will be my third time at the O2, to be 
part of events like this, just extremely thankful uh, that I have this opportunity on my hands, that I can that I could get a, a level like this to kind of showcase myself and, and just announce myself on the scene. Now, I've got, a, I've got a decent opponent coming up and I've got a nice test on my hands, so that will be where I'll be able to just show off a bit more, someone that comes forward, someone that wants to fight, someone that on the other end that wants to put it on me, and, and that's where I shine and that's where I do my best. And obviously the domestic scene at the top level, but also saw a good fight between Dubois and Gorman at the weekend. You've got Joe Joyce coming through. You're probably, what, four, five, six fights away from those guys, but excited to get into the mix and, and look to fight those guys in 2020. Yeah, exactly. That's the aim. To I'm a few steps behind right now, but the goal is to catch them boys up and, and get in the line with them and, and start challenging them. Like I was fortunate enough to spend a couple of weeks with the Gorman team, with their camp. They were nice enough to have me up there and be a part of it. So I'm, I'm close by. Uh, I'm, I'm not too far. I've got a few more, a few more steps to take, a few more building fights to have and things. But soon, soon I'll be hot on their heels. Good stuff, Fabio. I look forward to seeing you in action. We go to the southern area. Title fight between Dan Aziz and Charlie Duffy. I love fights like this because they're proper old school. Two Londoners, big support, 50-50 fight. I'm going to start with Dan Aziz. Dan, welcome. And uh, you haven't been on these major shows yet. We've heard a lot about you and obviously been working closely with MTK. We thank him for their support in making this fight as well. Must be exciting. I mean, this is exactly what you set out to do as a professional box on these big shows, go to arena and pick up the title on Saturday night. Um, yeah, first off, I'd like to thank you, Eddie and Matthew, for having me on the show. Um, yeah, big up to MTK, my management company. And yeah, um, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I come out the small hallway and these are the kind of shows that you envisage yourself fighting on and, you know, fighting for my first title and I couldn't have, you know, I couldn't have dreamt of fighting for it on such a big platform on a wicked card against a good opponent um, in Charlie and, yeah, I just look forward to it. We know Charlie Duffield always comes to fight and made massive improvements under Mark Tibbs. What sort of fight are you expecting at the O2 on Saturday? Um, yeah, just a war to be fair. Um, like two locomotives um, clashing. Charlie's a come forward fighter. Um, I've seen him spar. I've seen some of his fights. I don't. I've never seen him go backwards. So um, yeah, and I don't. I'm not really someone who likes to shy away. So I'm. I'm looking forward to a very um, all-out war to be fair. So I've trained myself, prepared myself for that, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Charlie, is that what we get on Saturday? We know what we get from you. I mean, you used to do that too much and you've improved a lot under Mark Tibbs, but I think it's inevitable that that's the type of fight we'll get on Saturday night. Um, yeah, definitely. The only one I go backwards from is my wife. Uh, uh, yeah, and I want to thank uh, my team, my manager Mark Tibbs, Dylan White for helping me, Eddie Owens, and Match and Boxing for getting us on a big platform. Um, it's a massive opportunity to uh, push up and climb the ladder. Um, made the best man win on the night. I know Dan very well, he's a night, so there's no bad blood there. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited. I train, train very hard. So, uh, I'm ready for the war. Good. We look forward to that one. Dan Aziz against Charlie Duffield for the Southern Area title. We'll move on to, again, for me, just a brilliant cruiserweight matchup. I've played this fight out in my mind a number of times. We've seen Richard Riakpour come through, beat Sam Hyde, beat Tommy McCarthy, unquestionably one of the hardest punchers in the division. Chris Bidham Smith, all action, technically very sound, great trainer in Shane McGuigan as well. I have no idea what is going to happen in this fight and I can't wait to see it. Chris, firstly, again, a big opportunity for you on the big stage. Um, what a fight this is expected to be. I know you and the team, Shane McGuigan's gym, very excited about the challenge on Saturday night. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously a great platform for me to, to have my first title fight on. Um, we're very excited. This week seems to be going so slow, it's killing me. But uh, I can't wait to get in there on Saturday night. Um, obviously, massive thanks to Eddie Matchroom and also um, Riggins Jim and, and Barry McGuigan for, for sorting this, this out for me and giving me this opportunity. Um, obviously, we try getting other fights in the division to, to have a breakout fight and people turned it down. So, um, all respect to Richard for taking the fight and uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday. People, when they analyse this fight, say that you may be technically the better fighter. Richard carries much more power in the fight. Is that how you see it as well? Obviously, we know that he's a huge puncher. 
do you, do you believe that? Are you expecting to have to put a box carefully on Saturday night? We know, we know you like to stand and train. You're always in exciting fights as well. Yeah, and obviously he carries power, but our records are identical. Yes, he's had better opposition in his last two fights, um, but we can both punch, so we've both got to be careful in there. Um, but the boxing skills I've got and the way I set up my attacks will definitely um, help me overcome this. Thanks, Chris. Richard, welcome. Um, <coughs> quite remarkable to see your rise. I watched your Born Fighter episode on the Matron Boxing YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch this, this episode. It's fantastic. And we know the story is great, but to be honest with you, that's really kind of irrelevant now as you approach these major fights in your career. And we expect a very, very tough fight against Chris Willem Smith on Saturday. Yes, um, everybody. Um you, um, I don't know if everybody knows my story, but I come from a, a hard background and boxing on small shows to the big stage. It was like, um, it's literally like the dream manifesting itself day by day. And I'm very happy to be here. Um, thank you to Matchroom, Sky, Sky Sports, my, my manager, Gideon White. And listen, we're, we're enjoying every single day, man. This is fun. This is really fun. Um, two things. Um, Billy Smith, you just said something about uh, me taking a fight and other people turning down fights against you. That was a lie, because I know some other fighters that um, offered you a fight, but you turned it down. I tried to make this fight with you a very long time ago, <laughs> probably before Tommy McCarthy and Sam Hyde, but you didn't take the fight for whatever reason. But one thing that was strange for me is like, obviously, Lawrence, I saw Lawrence Coley join, join, join your camp, and I thought that was so strange. So I want to ask you a question. Do you feel like your coaches undermined your ability to become the number one in the cruiserweight division in the British rankings? Uh, no, I don't. We, we uh, obviously discussed it, but did, who did you use to train with Isaac? Yeah, Isaac. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Isaac, Isaac was ranked like in the top 10. I was like 52nd in the UK, so it was completely different. Completely different. Um, but where were you both heading mm -hmm. towards the top 10? Yeah, we we're, we're both heading, heading towards the top 10, but he was already at the top 10. Now, Lawrence Okoli, it's not good. Lawrence Okoli, he's, he's ranked sixth. He's ranked first, and you're ranked sixth. So, I just feel like, listen, you, he undermined your ability to perform, and you're just seen as insurance. That's, not, that's, that's how it looks in my eyes, like, to be honest. Okay, well, I don't matter because me and Lawrence will be number one and two in the country after Saturday night, so I don't matter. Okay, we'll see. We'll see about that. But um, to be honest, I don't know too much of Chris Bennett Smith, but that's taught me all I need to know about him. He Richard, is in cut from do you believe you win by knockout on Saturday night? Listen, Bill and, Smith, Bill and Smith gets done in six. Mark my words. Okay, we look forward to that one. Bill and Smith against React for Saturday night. I can't wait. I can't wait for that fight. I could go to someone who is involved in that conversation, Lawrence Okoli. Welcome, welcome. Um, <laughs> it is, you are without doubt the toughest person to find an opponent for in the cruiserweight division. And I was having a very interesting conversation with Mr. David Hayes sitting next to you yesterday who was speaking so highly about he thinks that you're going to be such a big threat, not just at cruiserweight, but at heavyweight, by the way, as well. Um, you were due to fight Jack Massey, which was a great fight. We know he injured his arm. You're out defending your WBA title. We know you've also been mandated for the European Cruiserweight Championship, which is a very, very tough fight, which you've asked me to go and make. Frustrated by, by the movement, or you, you keep insane, you know what you're doing, you're playing the game, you're understanding how the game works, and you're staying active? I think that's what it is. First of all, must thank you um, for getting on such a beautiful card. Um, I'm happy to be here. And yeah, I just feel like what keeps me kind of grounded and focused on that, no matter what happens in boxing, is that life is a lot bigger than any fight. Obviously, I can see that Richard is very, very pumped and charged up for the fight on Saturday, along with my co um, my still remaining Chris. And I think that everyone just needs to just chill out and remember that it's only boxing. So that's what kind of keeps me focused and keeps me driven. I will win on Saturday and then I will go on to win the European title and then I'll go on to win the world title. I've said it before and I'll continue to say it. Talk about those changes under Shane McGuigan. We see it in, in just in the clips, but it's been a, a good change. You're feeling good. Feel as though in that short space of time you've already improved a lot going into Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, um, what 
we see him in Shane, and Shane is more than just like, um, just, you know, looking good on the pads and stuff. It's, you know, just little stuff like when I'm sparring against heavyweights, against different styles of people, the little instructions are just, um, that make a big difference. So I've been enjoying the work I've been doing. And finally, I don't know whether you want me to ask this question or not, but I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. This fight down here, which I think everybody is excited about, how do you see that fight playing out? I think Chris is going to stop him in one round. One round? Yeah. Okay. Really? Really? Okay. 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 Winner is Mariano Mourinho, Argentina. Yes. Okay, Mr. Gudino down the end has other. Winner is Mariano Mourinho. Yes. My boxer. Good. Well, we'll take the boxer, we'll take the ring on this, and uh, the OG arena has some continue. Yes. We look forward to a Cody against Gudino on Saturday night and Billum Smith against Rackport, two important cruiserweights. Mourinho, the winner is. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Goodina. Um, we move on to the heavyweight championships now. Again, two great heavyweight fights here, and of course, the main event in White against Rivas. Um, before we speak to Artur Spilka, I'm going to speak to David Hay to talk us through this fight and also his charge, Derek Chisora, in camp. We know this is a very, very dangerous fight for Derek Chisora, um, one he's been working very hard on with Dave Colwell. David, welcome, and uh, a big fight. I've seen you, you're, you're really, uh, your heart and soul is in these campaigns, and you live it and you breathe it with these guys, and expecting a tough fight on Saturday. Yeah, very tough fight. Uh, Spilker's a world-class fighter, and another very avoided fighter. He's obviously a southpaw, he's dangerous, you know, he's fought, you know, he gave a good account of himself against Deontay Wilder. Um, but I believe Derek has the inner strength, he has the will, when it comes toe-to-toe, -to -toe, blow for blow, I believe Derek will be the man standing. It's, it's, it's a hard fight, and he knows that. So he's punished himself in training. He's, you know, he's cut no corners. You know, he's had sparring partners. Sparring was a bit awkward in, in, in the beginning, getting accustomed to the southpaw style. But he 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 went through the, the horrible part of the awkwardness to get to the good place, and he was then landing quality shots. And he's got a grip to the the southpaw style, and he's looking forward to putting on a great performance because as as we've spoken about, getting past Spilker gives him that big fight, the fight with the likes of Joseph Parker. And Joseph wants to fight. I was, I was with him in uh, Vegas, and he was saying, "I can't wait for this. Let's get this. Let's get this fight with Chisora." And he knows that's a, a great fight. But none of that happens unless he gets past Spilker. And I know Spilker's been in shape. He's in shape. And I saw him. He's, he's ready to go. And I think this is going to be a very, very exciting fight. You know, a fight where Derek's going to grind him down and stop him late. It's, it's not going to be fun, it's not going to be, it's not an easy fight, it's not a tune-up fight. People, people, people may not have heard the name Spilka in the UK, but he's a, he's a genuine threat and he's a guy that's going to, I believe, bring out the very best in Derek because Derek needs to be at his best. What he turned up with against um, Sane and Gashi last time won't be enough to win again on Saturday night. Derek knows that, so he's, he's cranked up in training. His nutrition is good, his sleeping is good, he's not socialising, he's getting it right. And I'm looking forward to the fight. It's a tough fight, but it's a fight, it's, it's a must-win fight for him. That, that is, you know, we know with Derek, the fights against Gashi and the fights against Kiyab, the ones where he's not quite motivated. There's yeah. something about the other two, yeah. when Derek Chisora is backs up against it, yeah. Dillian White fight, the Carlos Takan fight, which goes down as one of the great yeah. fights at the venue of all time. Exactly. He needs to pull that performance. He I just pulled a special 0-2 Derek Chisora out of the bag. No doubt, but it seems the better his opposition and the more heat that's been put on him, you know, he seems to rise to the occasion. When someone's not really putting it on him and they're just trying to survive, you know, Derek, it appears that he just goes through the motions and gets a point to win, which isn't that enthralling for the fans. But <laughs> this guy's coming to win, and Derek's ready to ready, Derek's ready to go. You know, I've watched his sparring. He's, he's you know, particularly his last three sparring sessions, which are the most important. This is when everything seemed to click and everything came together, and uh, the war is uh, happening on Saturday night. War is coming. Arthur Spilker, welcome. Been trying to get you on a shows for matchroom shows for many, many years. Uh, especially in America as well, we know you have huge support worldwide from Polish communities in London, in New York, in Chicago. Uh, a big fight for your career on Saturday night. Yes, first, I want to say my is very good. I hope you understand me. And hello, welcome. Yeah, I'm so happy, you know, everything was good, but I'm not coming here 
Oh, I come in here for the war and, and just this, I have big respect for Chisora, he a warrior, he's a big heart, and you know, I know him personally, and always when I watch his fight, he give all hurt, he won't destroy the opponent, but not this time. Thank you. Just finally, the O2 is not far from here, it's a beautiful arena, the atmosphere is incredible, Derek Chisora lifts himself in that arena all the time, you're ready for war on Saturday night? Of course, I like, I like feel big emotion, you know, like I, I have, uh, I, <laughs> my English is not good, of course, uh, I have uh, more, you know, more, ah, I don't know, jak jest, jak jest politiczny, mam większą mobilizację. He said he's definitely going to knock him out on Saturday. No, 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 no. Emotion. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, exactly. I have no motivation for this fight. You know, he he's a good fighter. He a big man, and also I'm happy. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, everybody. And just I can wait Saturday night. Let's go. Well done, Arthur. Well done. My Polish is not very good, so don't worry. Uh, you must, you must teach. Oh, well. Yes, there's Pierre. Thank you, um, Derek. I know you've, you've done so many press conferences now, sometimes you want to talk, sometimes you don't want to talk, but you've seen Chilled yesterday, um, I think you know how big this fight is for your career, I know you're excited, but you're just going to get on with it on Saturday night, right? I'm sweating like a pig right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Are you sweating? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dripping. Jesus. Ah, uh, listen now, um, you know what? I want to take my time here right now, yeah, everybody to understand that, you know, boxing is great. I love boxing, um, especially all these big shows happening. But some of these shows are big, but they will not be happening if it wasn't for one man in this room. Most people don't recognize this man. I, I want to give my time right now to recognize my good or sitting oh, right sorry. there. <laughs> my good or sitting right there. Really, really, really makes it all happen. By the time you walk in there, the ring is all stable because of that man right there. So, uh, and I think you've seen more fights than anybody else in this room. Am I right, Mike? Yeah. What's the best fight you've ever seen? Yeah. No, no, best fight, your best yeah. fight. Yeah. yeah. If you didn't hear that, I said you'd go attack him. Yeah, you know what? On side is good. Sorry, this is what, uh, Mike, I don't think this is working. I think you're doing your job wrong now. <laughs> No, 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 Saturday's going to be buzzing, man. You know, you got Cody, Dave Ballen, David Price, myself. You know, you got the young generation down there coming up. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to go off. Um, I hope you guys can, you know, if you're reporting, I hope you get your ticket to come and watch. Uh, you know, uh, I know Speaker for a while, you know, I know him from Poland. I go to Poland a lot. Um, you know, everybody says they're going to come and fight, but I really and truly... I hope he don't run, he gives the fans what he's saying he's coming to do, and uh, I'm ready to go to war. I always like to go to war. I, I can't box, that's one thing I can't do. <laughs> I like to fight. <laughs> Fighting, yes, but boxing, I can't box. So uh, I hope he comes to fight, you know, and, uh, and we'll put a great show on. Merci beaucoup, thank you very much. And uh, is there any Brexit is in here? Brexit? No Brexit? <laughs> No joking. <laughs> Cheers, Del Boy. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. We'll be rooting for you on Saturday night. Um, the final fight to talk about up here, again, I have no idea what's going to happen in this fight. I think, as a fan, it's great to be involved in fights and shows like this fight in front of us with Billy Smith against Rep where you just don't know. So many possibilities, but just so much excitement to see what's going to happen. David Price, we're going to start with you. Um, again, jumping into a big fight. You've been on so many of these big stages now. Uh, chief support on a huge show. And um, as always, a very important fight for your career on Saturday. Every fight in every boxer's career, I do think is the next fight is the most important because the training camp's done. No matter what happens, Saturday night, you're getting paid. But you're fighting for your future, and me in particular, fighting for my future in this fight. Dave Allen, the perfect opponent for me Saturday night, I believe, you know, um, style-wise, suits my style, and I suit his style, in his opinion, so it's, it's going to gel, and it's going to be a, a, a great collision, um, I think it's been a long time coming, in the pipeline, this fight, there's, um, there's no bad luck before the fight, but I think the two of us are, well, I know, I know, I can only speak for myself, I'm desperate to win the fight, so, once that bell rings Saturday night, it's just going to be, all guns blazing. I saw you in the open workout and you look fantastic and you look like 
you've got the confidence going into this fight. You know, Dave Allen, who's really just come of age recently, has not boxed at the level or does not have the reputations of the Kuzmins or the Povetkins or, or that kind of level that you've got. Do you have the confidence because you just believe you're not beating on it? I think it's a bit of both. I think I think that Simon's right for me. I think I think I'm coming into my prime as a man and as a fighter. And it's easy to forget the experience I've had as a fighter. I've had, I've had well over 100, 100 odd fights in my career as an amateur and as a professional. So I'm very experienced, long in the tooth, um, and just physically and mentally and emotionally, I feel like this is where I'm coming into my prime. I think it, it's, it's the right time for me to strike. Finally, the, the pundits and the general consensus is price early, Alan late. Do you see that as well, or, or do you believe you will end this fight early? I'm going to go out there with the intentions of doing what I've been doing in training, and that's, that's to let the power shots go from, from the way it go, because I need to let Dave Allen know that he, he, he's, in, he's in a serious fight, otherwise it'll encourage him to keep coming forward. So if I, if I land them power shots early, I do believe the fight can end early, but we'll see Saturday night. Look forward to it. Finally, Dave Allen, can't quite believe you got a suit on up here. Um, <laughs> A, a massive occasion for you. I mean, a, again, it was a massive occasion for you headlining at the O2 against Lucas Brown. You're taking this more seriously than we've ever seen you, or, or just seriously. And, you know, Darren Barker there has done a great job. How do you feel going into this fight? You know, you're always sort of seen as the, the crown jester and the joker of, of the boxing scene. But a massive fight and a massive opportunity for you on Saturday night? Yeah, we, we, we spoke just before the press conference started. It was, it was a year ago today, you asked me the Nick Webb fight. I was ready to retire a year ago, uh, and I took the Webb fight, and, and things turned around. And I said that everything, after I landed Webb, I said everything's a bonus. Um, I should be retired now. I went and beat uh, Nebo, Bracamonte, and, and, and I, beat, I beat Lucas Brown. And if you told me that a year ago, I would never have believed you. So, Everything is a bonus. Saturday night again is another bonus. This this one's a big one. Thank you, Eddie. It's a big, it's a big bonus. Thank you. It's nice. Uh, I'm just I'm just living a life I never thought that I wouldn't. I wanted to continue, and the way that David you desperate. I'm desperate for this to continue. Uh, it's a good fight. I think David Price um, isn't the the fight that it was. I think he was a, a, as an amateur when he first turned pro. He was exceptional. Um, the things you don't lose. Uh, as you get older, or your power, uh, and he's not going to lose his boxing ability, uh, he's absolutely massive. It's a big ask, it's a big ask for me, you know, uh, the experience he's got is, is the key. I hope he comes as a go early, because he can't discourage me, like, he couldn't discourage me with his leg on so... Do you think he has the power to knock you out? I mean, he's renowned as uh, one of the biggest punches in the division, you, you can't just be taking these shots. And he's got the power to put me unconscious, but anything, anything short of unconscious. <laughs> he's in big trouble because I'm just going to be there. So unless he knocks, unless he knocks me spark out, he doesn't win this fight. Um, I'm not saying that's an impossibility. I'm saying good luck to him because he'll need it. What has been the, the switching mentality from you over that period? I see you looking over at, at Darren Barker, and you know what, what has changed your life in terms of your focus, in terms of your desire, and and your your mindset to take things seriously? I just matured a lot, you know, I, I, I matured as a, as a man, I spoke to David over there, but I matured a lot uh, the last sort of months. Met Darren, took on a few kids over there, Darren Moran and Monte, took them on, you know, I would have provided for them as well. I just want to, I just want to better my life, you know, I was, I was just plodding on, living in my, in my, my bed sit, as Dylan White used to call it, in my little flat, and I thought, and then something clicked, and I thought, you know what, I want better than this, and, and I've beaten it well, I, I bought my own house, and, I just thought, you know what, why? I'm wearing my suit now. I just thought, why, why not try and be better? Why, why not have nice things in life? So, yeah, I, just, I want to do that. Now. I know if I train hard and, and keep listening to Darren and performing, I can beat David Price. I can go on and on. And, and, and why not have a nice life? Eddie? That's what I decided. I just thought, yeah, why, why not me? So You came to me yesterday and said that if you beat David Price, or well, actually, you said, when I beat David Price, will you give me the Povetkin fight on the Lomachenko Campbell card? Do you worry about looking past these fights, such a heavyweight, uh, such a dangerous division in the heavyweights, or you you believe you win this fight comfortably? No, it, it's not a case of um, not a case of overlooking because I think David Price is criminally underrated in this country by, by boxing fans. All boxing people here know how how good David Price is as a fighter. 
For it, he's got his pitfalls, you know, we, we worry, people worry about his chin and, and his ability to do 12 rounds or whatever else, but he's a fantastic fighter, you know, he's, he's going to the Olympics, I, I, I'm a boxer myself, I know what it takes to get the levels that I've not got to, which he has got to, so it's not overlooking, I just know that if I beat David, you know, if I'm on your case with a Povetkin fight, my mum might not be able to work again, you know, and, and, and things like that, so it's not overlooking, it's, it's incentive, I, I know Saturday night when it gets hard in there, because it will, it will get hard, It'll get really hard for me and for, and for David. I know that I've got to keep pushing, and if you're going to pay me what I am, you're going to pay me for Povetkin. That will definitely keep, keep me in there when it gets rough. So uh, I'm just, I'm not overlooking. I'm just being excited and trying to incentivize myself. Well, you certainly had the toughest fight of your career on Saturday night against David Price. What a fight! What a card on Saturday at the O2. I cannot wait. We're going on Sky Sports Facebook from around 5 p.m. Uh, with Babbage and Fabio Wardley. And then we kick off the night with Dan Aziz against Charlie Duffield, Lawrence Cody, Chris Billum Smith against React Paul, Derek Chisora against Arthur Spilker, Dave Allen against Dave Price, and of course the main event, Dillian White against Oscar Rivas. It is an incredible night of boxing. Sky Sports box office in the UK, the zone across America and in their territory as well. Do not miss it. We're going to have head to heads now down the front, and all these guys are available for the media. Thank you to the media for a great turnout today.